mighty another day. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We love to praise the name of Jesus. And if you came with a praise on your lips, I want you to join in worship. I want you to join in praise. Whatever you have to do, if you don't know the words, wave your hands, move your feet, jump up and down, whatever you have to do. It's a good day. And God is worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. So put your hands together this morning. There is nobody like our God. Not one. Nobody like our God. Nobody. Put your hands together. Yeah, put your hands together like this.
feet of my faithful Savior we the angels they cry holy they cry hallelujah and they cry holy I and lift it up for all the world to see we tend to think that means we are to lift him higher. But Jesus was really prophesying of his being lifted up from the earth on the cross. If he would be lifted up from the earth on the cross, he would do the drawing through his death, which has a lot to do with what we're going to talk about today. 
has a lot to do with what we're going to talk about today. But I'm just thankful today for him being a holy God, an all-knowing God. And I, I thank him probably more today for him not giving me the power to be God. Because, boy, I would mess up some stuff in this world. I would mess up some stuff in this world. Let's get right on into it. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. All right. Y'all already know. Youth, let me see it before we start. Let me see what you got. I'm glad to see uh, Josiah and Hannah back for sure. Sister Pat, go on, raise it up. I see you. <laughs> I see you, Tyrell. Come on now, Amir and Heaven. Malachi, keep on going to school. You'll learn how to read real soon and right. Real soon. <laughs> Buddy's back there. Buddy got a notebook. There we go. I see your buddy in the back. Oh, yeah. Markel. Let me see who else we got. That's cool. Joel, you got yours? All right. All right. Let's get into this. I'm excited about today. I really, really, I really, really, really am. Sister Annette, what is happening here? You got to get on at 530 and reserve this seat. As long as I got Sister Beverly here, and Sister Annette here, I feel good. I feel good. Sister Yvette, we're still praying for you. Sister Valerie Townsend, we're definitely still praying for you. Uh, I let her know that in the announcements this week, we didn't, we didn't say anything to her because we finished the announcements before we got the word. So just so you all know, we're still, still praying for her. That's not Sister Sharon Bradley over there, is it? That's not her. Is that her? Sister Sharon, we happy to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. Happy to see you. Look at me starting to call everybody's name. Because you know I got to say good morning to Susu back there in the back. <laughs> good morning. And to the missionary in the back corner. Joy Evangeline. Yeah. All right. Let's get into this. Let us get into this. Everybody knows. Ethan, do you have your notes over there? Well, you working, but, you know, you can still, come on, make it happen. All right, today, y'all already know, I tell you all on Fridays and Saturdays what we're going to talk about. I just don't, like I said, I just don't give you the scriptures because I don't want y'all to come in dissecting this more than me on Sunday mornings. We are talking about the thin line between God's will and his wrath. Man, this is going to be a good one, young folk. This one here, if you take heed, this will keep you out of trouble. But if you're like me and Lathan, it won't. You'll learn it, and then you'll apply it later in life. You'll apply it later. We got a lot of reading, not really, today. But let's start here. Let's start here. We're going to be reading from Judges 16, 4 through 21. What I'm loving that we're doing and where God is taking us and what he's showing us, he's taking us back to some of the basic Bible lessons, some of the lessons we learned as children, some of our children church lessons about these heroes of the Bible. So today we are talking about Samson, and we get to unlock, uncover, and see some things here that have been here all along that the coloring book didn't tell us, that the cartoon didn't tell us, that the Sunday school book didn't tell us as children. Judges 16 and 4, we're going to be reading the verses 21 just so you all know. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah who lived in the valley of, uh, let's say, Sorek. We're going to call it that today. I don't speak Hebrew. Uh, the rulers of the Philistines, if you will. Who, who's a Philistine? Uh, who says Philistine? Who says Philistine? Are we uh, Philistines people or are we Philistine people? What are we? There we go. Okay. A lot of people say Philistine. The Philistines are some I hear too. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me what makes you so strong and what it would take to tie you up securely. Where's Teresa? Y'all give a hand to my sister Teresa for joining us this morning. <laughs> Teresa, we love you for real. Teresa has, it don't matter what's happening. She throws it down. She didn't throw it down. She just left her church early. I just want y'all to know the kind of love that we're surrounded with and that people show us, our loved ones and our family. She threw it down and came over and helped us this morning. So y'all be sure to show her the love y'all always show her. Samson replied, if I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I would become as weak as anyone else. 
So both streams, a lot of commentaries, a lot of the old, uh, uh, theologians. I said, uh, I did a Don word. A lot of theologians. Uh, the, the, it's one of the mornings. They argue what both streams are, right? I think the King James Version says green widths, I believe it says. Basically, just imagine we'll all kind of be on the same page, kind of like a long vine, basically. And you, you all ever had weeds that you try to pull and you're yanking and yanking and it will not break. It won't pull. It's that strong. So imagine that. So he said, uh, tie me up with seven of them. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings and she tied Samson up with them. Ooh, we got a lot of read. She had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of her house and she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it is burned by a fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Afterward, Delilah said to him, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, if I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes. This woman here, boy. So Delilah took new ropes and tied them up with them. The men were hiding in the inner room as before, and again Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. you I wonder how, how she was acting, knowing she was doing all this lying. Oh my God, Samson. I, was, I would just love to see that. I see the funny stuff in Scripture. Y'all, boy, I'm telling you, the Scripture is something else. I, that's funny to me. I don't care. Man. Uh, but again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. Oh my God, Samson. That's funny, y'all. I don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> Delilah said, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, if you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom. Y'all know a loom is a machine. All your seamstress, all these women, they know. But for the youth... It's a, it's a machine that weaves fabric together that makes your blankets and your quilts and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle. I would become as weak as anyone else. So while he slept, Delilah wove, I guess, the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. The other funny thing here is Samson ain't stopped lying yet, has he? <laughs> this dude, a hero of the Bible. What are we on? Line number three so far? Or two? One of three, I think. Then he tightened it, or then she tightened it with the loom shuttle. Again, she cried out, Samson, oh my God, the Philistines have come to catch you. But Samson woke up. That's hilarious. Pulled back the loom shuttle and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. Then Delilah pouted. How can you tell me I love you? How can you tell me? Yeah, I love you when you don't share your secrets with me. You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you strong. Ooh, here we go. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death. I've never seen the scripture where a man was nagging. I, I just Okay, finally Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed. For I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, if my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, so she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back! Oh my God! One more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands. Last three verses. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head in her lap. And then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down and his strength left him. Verse 20, last two. Then she cried out, oh my God, Samson, the fifth man. I'm sorry, this is, I'm trying to behave here, but that is funny, boy. Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza 
where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. Can you hit the uh, list and switch? Thank you. I'm sorry. So that's the thing. He shook himself. Ain't it crazy how he's still out here thinking he's working for the Lord and didn't realize that the spirit of the Lord had departed from him? He's still out here doing, still out here singing, doing concerts, still out here jumping up, doing praise and worship, singing background, coming to church, out, doing all that. I don't have nothing to do with this. So uh, this is what I want y'all to know, though. I promise y'all I do know and I do understand how deep this story really is. But we're really not going to get into the real depth of this story. We're not going to get into really what's here because it's a lot to unpack here. Uh, we're just going to really deal with kind of one, two sides of this story. I understand that Samson, just so y'all know, I do understand that Samson and Jesus have a parallel story here, right? It's a paralleloquy. Y'all know that? It's a paralleloquy. That's what it is. I do understand that Samson is a foreshadow of Jesus. He is a type of Jesus. And I do understand that. I want y'all to know that before we get into this message today and that I only bring out just a little bit. I understand that Samson's birth was foretold by an angel. Have y'all ever read that? The angel came and, and told of what was going to happen. He talked to, the, to Samson's mother without the father. Same thing happened to Jesus with Mary, right? I, I get that. Samson seeks a wife outside of his own kind in, in Delilah, even in his first wife that he had. He loved these Philistine women. Samson seeks a wife outside of his own kind in the same way Jesus Christ sought his bride out of, out of, or sought his bride of humanity outside of his own kind, out of divine heritage. Jesus Christ is the Lion of Judah, and from his broken body in his death comes grace that is sweeter than honey, just like the lion. Y'all remember the lion that Samson killed earlier? I want to say it was in, uh, what are we in, Judges 16? It may have been in 15 or 14, somewhere in there. Uh, same thing when Samson, where he ate the honey out of the dead body of the lion. Samson's woman, whom he intended to marry, was unfaithful to him by not withholding from what she was trusted with. And as a result, she was given over to Samson's best man. I don't know if y'all remember that. We didn't read that today. But that's, that's here in this story, in the story of Samson. His best man kind of represents a type of Satan. He's like a, a devil. You know, he represents the devil in a sense, just as the woman in the Garden of Eden did and was handed over to the serpent, the devil, because she did not withhold herself from the instruction God gave about the tree. There's so many similarities and paralleloquies here. I'm telling y'all, that word is going to be in the dictionary real soon. Samson was being set up and betrayed for money by one that claimed to love him. That's what Delilah did, selling him out for silver. Is that not what Judas did? to Jesus, the exact same thing. The cross is our door into the eternal realm. Jesus Christ carried his door. Y'all know that, right? He put his door on him. He put his door, our door. He put the cross on his back and uh, went up to the hill of Calvary, just as Samson did when he carried the city. Y'all remember that? When he the gates and the city door, broke it off, put it on his back, and went and set it up on the hill. I believe that was Judges. That was somewhere between 13, we know, 13 and 16. Uh, Samson was humiliated and put on display when he was captured and arrested for the entertainment of others, just like Jesus. These stories are so similar. Samson turned the tables on the Philistines. They thought they had him when they arrested him and captured him, but ultimately he had them. And that's exactly what happened to Christ. Samson made sure that his own people did not harm him. I don't know if y'all remember 15, 14, somewhere in there, maybe 15, I think, when, uh, when, when the, the men of Judah came to capture Samson because the Philistines had set up camp in their town. And so they went to get him. Like, Yo, you got to get the Philistines out of here. So they went and got him. But Samson explained some things to him, and Ju the men of Judah didn't kill him. They weren't the ones that killed him. But he turned himself. So he gave his life over while in Philistine, Philistine captivity. Likewise, Jesus was arrested by a mob of his own people. And, and died voluntarily in the hands of his enemy. Last one, Samson's greatest victory. His greatest victory was accomplished in his death. Look at how many people in the house of Dagon 
when he knocked over the two pillars, right? The two pillars. Here he is between the two pillars. And do you realize that Jesus' greatest victory was in his death? Look how many lives were lost, you know, because that's what happens when we come to Christ. We die, right? It's the, it's the same thing. Just to help you understand a little bit of uh, the, the story, Samson's story, uh, the story of Samson begins in Judges 13 and opens with verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines who oppressed them for 40 years. Kind of like, kind of reminds you of right before Jesus came. Remember God was silent for 400 years, didn't speak and all of that. Kind of the same thing. Samson's parents were Manoah, that was his father, from the tribe of Dan and lived in the town of Zorah. Samson's mother's name is not mentioned. Uh, but tradition called her two different names, which really don't matter, for real. Um, but it's Hazel Laponi, uh, and also they, she was referred to as Zalel Panit. Nazarite, we talked about the Nazarites earlier, and I just want to make sure the youth understand what a Nazarite is. It's an Israelite who is consecrated to the service of God. They take a vow to include not drinking wine, no vinegar, no eating of grapes or raisins, which I would have failed this one because vinegar is in me and Joy's favorite sauce of all times, hot sauce. So I would never in my life ever be a Nazarite. Never, ever, ever. She likes crystals. I love the Schnucks brand. It's the best hot sauce out there. Just letting y'all know. So I could never be a Nazarite ever in my life. Uh, he could not get a haircut again. Well, I thought about this. Let me think. I was saying that wouldn't be an issue for me, but it probably would because it would deal with my pride once y'all saw how my hair really grows if I couldn't shave. So, yeah, again, I could not take the Nazarite vow if I couldn't shave my head and y'all see my George Jefferson every Sunday. Um, and then the other thing is the Nazarite could not go near dead, the dead. They could not go anywhere near the dead. And it doesn't matter if their parents died or if their siblings died. They could not go near the dick, the dead, even if their children died. My main question today, we're talking about, what's our title? The, th the thin line between God's will and his grace and his wrath. Reading. I'm ahead of y'all. See, y'all right here at 10.05. I'm already at 10.15. Uh, the thin line between God's will and his wrath. The main question I want to ask you today, what can cause us to cross this thin line? I think if we start to think in life, if we start to consider what gets us in these places, some of us would not find ourselves in the predicament that we're in. Point one, this brings me to point one. I'm going to give you point one already. My friend... We talk every other day. My brother, my little brother, Pastor Tyrone Roberson, Rehoboth Christian Ministries, over on uh, Lewis and Clark in St. Louis in the good old Moline Acres. We were talking about this, and this is kind of where I got the title from and this message. He said to me, don't ever overestimate one act of obedience and don't underestimate one act of disobedience. Don't overestimate one act of obedience don't underestimate one act of disobedience. What does this mean? Don't think you're doing so good because you obeyed God one time. Don't think because he told you to preach and you started preaching that you are in his will or that you will remain in his will forever. And then don't underestimate one act of disobedience. See, we can't overplay obedience but we also can't downplay one act of disobedience. I'm going to show you a person in scripture, as a matter of fact. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15. This is where Saul obeys and disobeys God at the exact same time, right? And we're going to skip around here. Now go and completely. So this is Samuel, the prophet Samuel, talking to Saul. This is what God told him to tell King Saul, the first physical king of Israel. He says, now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Listen to this. The same God that we think, you know, most people only want to talk about the love of God, this soft side of God. 
you know, oh, God is love. Would God act like that? What would Jesus do? But look at this. He says, destroy the entire Amalekite nation. The men, the women, the children, the babies, the cattle, the sheep, the goats, camels, and donkeys. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from, uh, I guess, Havilah. We'll go with that. All the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. So he left Agag alive. Everybody else is dead. All the babies. All Man, can you imagine that? Saul and his men spared Agag's life. Now we're at verse 9. Uh, spared Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs. Everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality. Verse 18, we're skipping. And the Lord sent you on a mission. This is Samuel talking to Saul again. He says, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder? Young folk, plunder. You know, that's what you steal when you're looting and and going into, that's what the plunder is. And do what was evil in the Lord's sight. Then he says, this is Saul talking, but I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission he gave me. That's his one act of obedience. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. All of us know this, especially anybody in my age group. This is what we heard every time before we got a spanking, which I still don't get the, the correlation. But And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as, a, as sinful as witchcraft. And stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Is that it? I think that's it. Man, I think about, so, you know, now we live in a day and age where we bring the sacrifice of praise. Our praise, you know, is part of the sacrifice that we offer to God. Singing, music, you know, all of this. Our worship to the Lord. And here it is. Samuel is telling Saul, the most important thing, the prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? We all know this story. Simon Peter answered, man, I love y'all. This is one of the things I love in scripture because it is so much in this. Watch what y'all about to see here. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Basically, Jesus is saying, you deep. Yeah, you, you deep, Peter. You, you can see. You can hear. You, you hearing in the, you in the spirit, Peter. That's what they used to say when I was coming up. Oh, you there. You in the spirit, doc. That's what he said. But then, let's see, 21. He says, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem. And that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. Verse 22, but Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him. Peter began to reprimand Jesus for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord. Him saying Lord right here is so key, y'all. This is one of the things we have to unpack. The fact that he calls him Lord right here. He said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from you. Look at this. What verse was that? Was that 13 when he said, you in the spirit, doc? And that's somewhere, that was like in the same conversation. And just a few lines later, he says, get away from me, Satan. And a lot of people argue over this line right here. But to help you understand what was really going on, what was really happening, you have to go, we have to go and look at another time 
when Jesus said a similar thing to help you understand what was really going on here. And that is in, where is that? That's in Matthew 4. Just two scriptures, well, actually three scriptures, 8 through 10. Matthew 4. Listen to this. This is when Jesus was in the wilderness. Remember, he was hungry. He had been fasting 40 days. It says, next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Listen to this. This is key. And their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You see, he pretty much said two similar things. One he said to Satan, one he says to Peter. But this is the kicker right here. This is the kicker. This is the part that we often miss. Here it is, Satan, the devil, has tempted Christ this many times in the wilderness. He talked about turning the stone to bread. He talked about throwing himself over the cliff, all of this. Then he gets to this one, and you notice Jesus didn't come hard and check him until this one. He let him tempt him. He let him come to him. It wasn't until this one. And it's, if you really look at it, you'll see it's actually for the same reason he told Peter to get out of his Satan. If you really see it, y'all, do y'all see why? You don't see it, do you? Oh, I'm going to love to show you this. You do understand that Peter and them knew. Peter and them knew the old prophecies. They knew the Messiah was coming. In their mind, the Messiah was going to be this great king of war, this great king in battle who was going to come and deliver them from Roman persecution. And he's going to take over and he's going to help uh, restore Israel and do all of this and take them up from under the bondage and the, you know get their neck from under the foot of, of Rome and all of this and he's going to be king they knew this he called him Lord which means he was a servant to him he was his master right Peter already understood this but do you understand Peter said no nah, that's no nah, you, you're not going to do it that way we, we don't want you to you're not going to die this is not going to happen to you what Peter was doing was the same thing the devil did in the garden. Tried to get Jesus to take his throne around the will of God, the way God said you're going to get the throne. That's the same thing that was happening here. Peter was saying, no, nah, you're not getting this throne by dying. No, nah, I'm going to be here with you. That's not going to happen. He tells him to get behind me, Satan. Just like he told Satan to get out of here when he said, I'll give you the throne. If you just kneel to me, you can get the throne. You're going to get the throne. Just kneel. Just kneel to me. So what was happening here? Peter was trying to go around the will of God. And isn't it funny when you try to go around the will of God, you go from being blessed of God to, to God saying, get behind me, Satan. Get out of here, Satan. In the same conversation, which goes along again with you can't overestimate one act of obedience and underestimate one act of disobedience because it can happen like that. It can happen just like that. Wow, I'm here at the end, y'all. I'm quitting on time today. Almost. Point three. Point three. Check your desires and your appetite. Check your desires and your appetite. Going back to the story of Samson. We talked about Samson and didn't really, 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 really dig in. Going back to the story of Samson, where he began, where we began this entire journey of discovering the thin line between God's will and his wrath, we find that one major thing got Samson in trouble, right? One major thing that got Samson in trouble was, yes, his disobedience to God. Yes, it was by breaking his vow. But him breaking his vow had a lot to do with the lust of his flesh. Y'all ever heard people say, I have, I probably said it to my parents, to just be honest with you, at some point when I was a whole lot younger, like way younger. You know, when you fall into relations with somebody and you get caught, you know, one of the main excuses, especially men, women use it too, it just happened. It just happened. I've heard that so much. I've probably used that so much. Joe taught it to me. But I've used that so much. It, it just happened. But what I want us to see here to help us understand this thin line 
between God's will and his wrath is it did not just happen. There was a lot that went on before Samson fell. That's what I want us to see today. There was a lot that went on before Samson fell. First of all, Samson fell in love with a woman who was not. Let me give this disclaimer first. I'm totally for if you want to, whoever you want to marry, whoever you want to be with. I don't what uh, race. This is not a race, a racial thing. This is not a racial statement. This is about being unequally yoked. This has nothing to do with race. Even though Samson married a Philistine woman, right? Outside, what it's about is we hear the term unequally yoked, young people. A yoke is basically have you ever seen TV, a cartoon, anything where you see something that goes around the neck of cattle, cows, goats, sheep, whatever. And what happens is Malachi, stand up for a minute just to see this. Let me see. Malachi is so much shorter than me. Come on up, let me see you so that everybody can see you. Malachi is so much shorter than me. If I was to put a yoke, if we were to yoke ourselves together with a yoke, I would probably kill him because we're not equally balanced, right? We're unequally yoked. I would drag him and suffocate him. Or because he's so much shorter than me and him trying to hold it, he would probably trip me. I would probably break my neck or anything like that, right? That's really what I'm talking about here. Thank you, man. With, uh, with this unequally yoked thing. I'm not talking about race at all. I'm talking about the fact that Delilah didn't believe what Samson believed. She didn't follow the same God Samson followed. We can go back to his wife in the previous chapter. She was another Philistine woman. They didn't believe what he believed. That's really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about that other stuff. Like Pop used to say, I ain't talking about what y'all talking about. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. So that's what we're talking about. So that's the number one thing he did. His appetite, his desires was for someone who didn't think like him. Now, we hear the term opposites attract, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about beliefs. Like how can you walk together if y'all don't even agree on who God is? How can you walk together if you don't agree on, you know, things like that. I'm not talking about the opposite stuff that make y'all fit perfectly together to make you a match. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all this other stuff that I'm talking about. So I want y'all to get that clear, right? That's what we're talking about. That's the, that's one thing that he did. Another thing that he did, another thing he did was, did you all see where he laid his lap? in Delilah's head. This goes along still with what we're talking about. He laid his head in the lap of Delilah. The lap is a place of intimacy, right? This is a place of intimacy. A, 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 a lap is a place of comfort. But to lay your head in someone's lap, you have to see the, the symbolism here, what it means. Samson, his head, his thoughts, right? His mind. He rested his thoughts in his mind. Not in a good sense. Look at where he laid them. He laid them in the lap of lust. Some woman who was not meant for him. That's where he rested his thoughts. He gave up. He did not work his mind. He didn't work his thoughts. He didn't work his beliefs. In a sense, he rested from his beliefs. He did not, he did not act on his thoughts and his beliefs. We see it. Look at everything that happened, right? He lays his head in the lap of lust, and with doing that, she now has access, free access to his head. We see she calls for the man to shave his head, but she can do anything she wants to do. She basically controls his fate. I, I'm just using that word. She controls his future because he gave it up. That's what he did. He gave it up. He, and so with that, this is the other thing. Now, this is the one that really got me. This is the one that really, and I'm done right here for real. I just want us to really think through this today and see what gets us in trouble. What really, really, really gets us in trouble. It ain't, it, this stuff don't just happen, y'all. Young folk, this stuff doesn't just happen. Trip off of this. Delilah is from the valley of Sorek. Well, that's what we'll call it. 
S O R E. Is it K? Do you know what that means? It is translated grapes, specifically red grapes. What in the world is Samson doing in the Valley of Grapes? Isn't, didn't, didn't God say, you're not supposed to eat grapes, you ain't supposed to touch them, nothing from the vine, no vinegar, no, why is Samson chilling? As a matter of fact, I know he spent time there because it talks about day after day. Didn't we just read that? Where Delilah nagged him day after day? That means he's camping. He's camping out where he shouldn't be. So there is no such thing in this case as it just happened. No. This dude is flirting with, hanging around, all of this stuff. And this is, <laughs> this is what gets him in trouble. This is what gets him in trouble. So here it is, our desires, our appetite, we got to check them. This is one of the things that gets us over this line. We're in his will. We're on the right side of God because of our own desires, our own appetite. The other thing we talked about, what was point one? What was the first point, Marsha? Don't overestimate one act of obedience. Don't underestimate one act of disobedience. This gets us in trouble and puts us on the wrath side of God. Just because we obeyed him once and stepped out there and did something doesn't mean we're forever in his will. Which kind of goes along with all that once saved, always saved stuff. That's a whole different topic, though. Totally different topic. Totally different topic, but it really relates here. It absolutely relates here. And point two was don't try to go around God's will. However, He said, do it. This can go with anything. This can go with anything. This can, this can go with relationships. This can go with. I've been telling y'all for years. Well, I ain't been telling y'all. I've been telling the radio show audience. A lot of y'all for years. I said, watch, wait, and see. Real soon, y'all, because of the laws and how they shifted the laws for marriage and relationships in the U.S., I've been saying for years, watch, we're going to see a court case, and we're going to see some type of law being put into place that's going to protect the pedophile. Have y'all seen that in the news this week, last week? It's happening. That thing opened the door. What happened? They're going around God's will. I can love who I want to love. How can you question who I love? I can't pick. That's the one I hear from everybody. You don't choose who you love. But you do choose who you lay down with. You do choose whose lap you lay your head in. But it's not just, a, again, it's not just about sexual sin. Laying your head in the lap of lust also can be with your mind about being your mind being changed. A lot of this weird, this weird doctrine, this weird stuff in the earth. Genesis one, between one and two, the gap theory. That's a whole thing in the church. God destroyed the world. This is where the dinosaurs and them. How do y'all come up with this stuff? Nowhere else in the Bible does it even give us an explanation of what happened between Genesis one and two. But we completely lay our heads down in the lap of, in this case, the, our lust is our desire to want to be great, which goes along with pride. That's really what's happening. We want to be known for our, our, our intellect and our smarts, and we study some of the weirdest stuff that has taken us around God's will. And when you go around God's will, we are on the rad side of God. I really want our young folk to hear that. Those of you all in high school, those going to college, they're going to teach you some of the craziest stuff that's going to make sense to you. You're going to say, hmm, that does make sense. That, that does make sense. But if the word didn't talk about it, if the word didn't talk about it, so today's message was super simple. It's just to help us wake up. That's the other thing that happened with Samson. 
in that area of scripture. He went to sleep. He was no longer aware. What well, spiritual awakening class? Come on. What is the definition to spirituality? Yep. Be aware. It's awareness, awareness, awareness. Be aware, awake, and alert, and alive. Here it is. Samson turns his mind over to his desires, to his lust, and it's sleep. What else do we expect to happen? But his strength to be taken from him. And for God's spirit to leave him. What else do we expect? This is a super simple one. Wanted to keep this one simple so you all, so especially the young folk. It ain't just the young folk. <laughs> it ain't just the young folk. But I want them to have a head start to understand how we get on what we call the bad side of God. What happened? What did we do? And every time, you know, every time something bad happens to us doesn't mean it's the wrath of God. That's another thing you have to understand. That's just what happens to us as believers. It, it's, it's just going to happen. But the wrath side of God, that's what we're talking about. What did you do to get on the wrath side of this line? And one thing we have to realize is, one thing we really, 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 like for real have to realize is, we did not just end up there. It was a string of a whole bunch of bad decisions. Going to camp out at Sorek, and God said, don't eat grapes, and you go to the Valley of the Grapes. The Valley of Grapes. Falling in love with this woman, who thinks nothing like you, worships other gods, worships false images and idols and all of this. And this is who we choose to fall in love with. And then we're the ones sitting up crying. I don't know what I did wrong. But you don't love me. The other thing here is we really see Samson's awakeness and his alertness leaving before we ever see him before the scripture ever says he went to sleep. How dumb was Samson every time she came in? Oh my God, Samson. How did you not know this woman is setting you up? Three times. He's losing it over time and doesn't even recognize it. Doesn't even realize it. That's what's happened to us as believers. We believe everything now. We accept everything the Bible said to reject. And then we reject the stuff that the Bible said to embrace. That's the crazy thing. Next week, I'm going to teach a message that don't have nothing to do with me. Because this altar boy eats me up, burns my skin every Sunday walking up here. Next Sunday, y'all going to sit here. And I'm teaching from out here. Because, man, I think about time after time, the relationships I was in, that I was in. The dumb stuff I got myself into. Because I was lulled. Did we see that in the scripture? It says Delilah lulled him to sleep. That was there. I know we read that. Didn't we read that? Please let me see that last verse. In uh, Judges 16, one of the last ones. I know it's there. Uh, but he didn't go before that. Was that the last one? Uh, there it is. I knew I read that. That wasn't even in my notes. She lulled Samson to sleep. He was no longer awake and alert. But based off his actions, he was yawning before he got to this point. How do you not recognize this woman? Every time she asks you a question, and all of a sudden she goes to that, oh my God, they're here. And you don't catch this. So he's dead to what's happening to him, to his surroundings. I'm praying today for everybody here who 
continually, continually falls victim to your lust and your desire. But I'm also here today to help us become aware and alert to the fact that we're not just falling. It's not just happening. It's us putting ourselves in these positions. We choose to go to Sword. We choose to hang out there. So my prayer is for us today, those of us who keep doing that and keep playing the victim, crying every week, how did I get here, Lord? What did I do? What we did was we crossed the line. We, cro we crossed the line. We stepped over this line. This is what got us in trouble. This is what got, got God angry at us and angry with us. You know, another thing I just thought about, and I'm going to close right here. This is not in my notes either. Three things that Samson was told not to do. Don't go near the dead. But if you go back earlier, when Samson's wife was given to his best man and all that, Samson was mad. And remember Samson's wife or his, his, his intended wife gave over the riddle. Remember he gave them a riddle. If you answer this riddle, I'll give you this, these 30 pieces of clothing and garment. The scripture says Samson went and killed 30 men and stole their clothes. And we don't trip off the fact that he just broke his vow. You can't kill somebody and not be around the dead. You can't. You can't kill somebody and not be around the dead. We now see it with the great thing. How dumb are you to go to the Valley of Sword, right? We see that. And then what was the, what was the other one? The grapes, the kill, and the hair. We see the hair. We see that one. But the killing thing. But ain't it crazy? How in the world does he kill the men, but he didn't lose his strength then? He kills the man. He breaks his vow then. But the scripture didn't say that God's spirit left him then. It says it left him when he allowed her to shave his head. What does that have to do with everything I'm talking about? We're talking about the head again. It symbolizes two things. First of all, his head symbolizes God, his covering, right? But it symbolizes what he believes what he believes, what he thinks. And Samson here, his mind was changed. We see it. He's hanging out in the valley of sorry with this woman. So my prayer is for us that we will wake up. Wake up and realize it is us. It's our fault. That thin line in the middle that's us crossing that line, going into his wrath. Doing it because we like what we like. Doing it out of anger. Anger will call. <laughs> Scripture says, be slow to anger, but sin not. We see Samson was angry. He was upset because they tricked him out of the, the, the answer to this riddle. But he sinned. So my prayer today is definitely for us to wake up. For those of us who have bought into a lie, who have believed a lie, our minds have been changed. We believe something that the scripture, and I know what the scripture says, but that was in the old times. That's what the kids are going to hear. That's what y'all going to hear in, in school, especially when you get to college. Well, you hear it in high school. You hear it in middle school. You hear it in elementary these days. So that's my prayer. I'm praying and asking God, Lord God, please. Please, God, do what you've always done. Continue to give us, first of all, your love. And with that love comes knowledge. And with that knowledge and with that love comes intimacy with you. So thank you for making it available to us. 
And I ask you, dear God, to forgive us. Forgive me, Lord God. Forgive me for intentionally crossing this line. Stepping out of your will. Stepping out of what it is that you've instructed me to do. And then trying to go around your will and try to trick you out of this thing. Oh, I'm guilty. I'm super guilty of that one. Forgive us, Lord, for that. We just want to be right, God, in this last and wicked, evil time. We want to be right. So when you come back, you'll come back for us. That's what we want to be. We want to be right. And the fastest road to being wrong, we see it all throughout scripture, is the enemy confusing us, offering us a different way, a different idea, going around what God said. So God, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word was here before we were ever born, before our parents were born, before our grandparents came here. My prayer, God, is that we just stay awake and alert and aware so we don't fall victim time and time again to the dumb stuff. We keep falling for the same dumb stuff over and over. But I thank you, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the, 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 the very fact that we don't live strictly under the law without grace anymore. And that we don't drop dead when we disobey you. Thank you for another opportunity today to repent, to turn away from these things. I am grateful to you, God, for this. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for opening our understanding, for drawing us closer to you. And with this, then we can go out. We can't even talk about going out to a dying world and being a witness to the lost until we get these things right and see ourselves. So thank you for showing us us today, Lord. Thank you for showing us us today. Teresa, sing the song. Just take this moment and reflect. Just think on where you know you've gone wrong. Where you know you did it and crossed this line. Don't think about what somebody else did to you. Not today. Not today. Think about what you did. I can't help but think about it. No, we're over time, but let's just take this moment. It's a testimony. Testimony. You are holy. Man, we serve a holy God. If it was my decision, Holy. if if people treated me the way we treat God, Holy. if if it was me <laughs> and my week to be God, most of us would be dead. So I thank Him for being holy, a holy God. For there's no one else like you, who is know it's you today I'm already standing if you know it's you that has gotten out of the will of God you can just stand on your feet all eyes closed please
Just stand to your feet and take this opportunity to talk to our Father in heaven. If you know it's you, ask him to forgive you. He'll do it. He will absolutely do it. He loves us. He wants us. He draws us daily. out to you? Do we have our connection cards? Sister Z, y'all take a connections card, fill it out, and one of our ministers will call you this week, pray with you, figure out what you need, figure out what your needs are. Is it for salvation? Is it just repentance? advantage of what we have here. We have ministers who are willing to pray with you, to help you through these situations. So while you're standing, they'll, they'll pass you a card. young folk. Take advantage. Pull us to the side. Talk to us. Get your questions answered. good God.
Good morning. Welcome to Gateway Area Bible Fellowship Church, where we find needs and meet them. My name is Shar, and I'm so excited that all of you could join us for our worship experience. We are still praying for Sister Yvette Moore. Her father passed away, and it's important to keep her lifted during this time of bereavement. Sister Yvette, we love you, and please know that you can call on us at any time. Attention, executive board members and ministry leaders. A meeting will be held at the church on Thursday, December 9th at 7 p.m. Thank you, and our pastor looks forward to seeing you there. Are you new to our band app? Or maybe you've been using it for a while. Please be sure to add your photograph and your full name to your band profile. It helps us identify everyone, and it's a nice way to get acquainted. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing your smile. Come worship with us. Be sure to reserve your seats for service on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. on the band app. And if you know someone outside of our band group, tell them to visit our Facebook page to reserve the number of seats that they need, or you could do it for them. See you on Sunday morning. Coffee is nice. But if you're looking for the perfect way to jumpstart your day, join us at 5 a.m. seven days a week on the prayer line. We also pray at 6 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Let's study God's word together. Join us for virtual Bible study at 6 p.m. on Tuesday nights. It's easy and convenient. All you have to do is dial the prayer line number. Are you new to our band group or do you just want more control of your notifications? Good news. We have a solution for you. Go to your settings, then click my settings and under push notifications, select comments and then choose comments on my post only. So you will not receive notifications all day from other members responding. Thank you. And we look forward to communicating with you. Mondays are fun days at Bible Fellowship. Join us for youth Bible study via Zoom on Monday nights. Youth ages 9 through 12 log on from 6 to 6.30 to hear God's word. Teens, join us from 6.30 to 7. Let's do this. Lily, what are you doing? It's time to go to church. But I need to finish my breakfast. Lily, it's 9.25. We're going to be late. Let's go. First, I need to get my peppermints in my purse. Lily, it's 9.35. Church starts in 10 minutes. Are you finally ready? Let's go. But my shoes are missing. Hi, church family. Hi, church family. Lily and I just did that skit because we totally understand how hard it can be to get out of the house on Sunday mornings. But it's important to be on time, right, Lily? Yes. Yeah, because if you're not in church by 10 o'clock at the latest, we give your seat away. And you don't want that to happen. So make sure you make it to the sanctuary by 9.45 on Sunday mornings. And you know what? Let's do better. Together. <laughs> you want to be able to give anywhere, anytime? If you just download the Givelify app right to your phone, you can pay your tithes, your offering, you can give a donation. Just download the Givelify app, put in the church's name, and it's that easy. Anywhere, anytime, you can be a blessing to the church. Let us stand all over the building. Happy to see y'all here this week. Definitely happy to see you all here this week. Y'all give Teresa another hand. Man, y'all can do just a little bit better than that. She came and helped us out. She did us a favor. Y'all show her your love. Yeah. Now give me a hand. I'm just playing. Um, yeah. Minister Joe, where are you? You back now. Let's see him mess up this. It's closing like always. Good to see Sister Amy back in the land of the healing and the healed and the living and all of that. Brother Rico, without the neck brace on, y'all. It's good to see healing happening along with his wife, Sister Simone. Just happy to see all y'all here this week. Let's see, who else? 
Somebody please usher C. Marcus and give him a visitor's badge. Y'all welcome the newest, oldest member of the church. <laughs> and Brother Mose. Man, is that the flood? Brother Mose Anderson, good to see you this week. That's the coolest brother in the world. That's Brother Willie Flood, Sister Flood. Oh, and I'm glad to see y'all. Brother Flood, that's my guy right there. Happy to see y'all. Happy to see everybody that came out today. We see Danae back there with that red on. Y'all getting me in trouble calling names. I'm just trying to see. Always glad to see Evangelist Rhoda Hicks sitting over here. Always. Happy to see our Christian Board of Education leader. I saw, where's Reverend Anthony? Is she gone? Oh, there she is. So we love y'all. Y'all have a great, 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 great week. Don't forget offering. You're going to be escorted around. So y'all please give today. Give liberally. And uh, that's it.